Senator from North Carolina. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I was uh, presiding when the colloquy started with my uh, colleagues here to talk about tax reform. I had not intended to speak today, and I'm sure my staff are scrambling, wondering what the boss is going to say. But I really want to weigh in to this discussion, and it's mainly because of the personal perspective of a leader who's seen the positive impacts of having the courage, the focus, and the discipline to deliver on tax reform. Back in 2011, I was elected, uh, I was in my third term. Republicans got a majority, and I, I became Speaker of the House. When I came in in February of 2011, it was reported to me that we had a $2.5 billion structural deficit. We had the tenth or the fourth highest unemployment rate in the nation. And we had six months to figure out how to balance the budget. So it was counterintuitive to a lot of people that we would spend time on regulatory reform and tax reform, particularly tax reform. In other words, reducing the amount of revenue that we're coming in at the same time that we were in a deficit ourselves. But in the first six months that we were in the majority, we cut sales tax. And then we went over a two-year period, even with that $2.5 billion structural deficit, to make the changes in corporate tax and income tax. It took North Carolina from the 44th most taxed state. In other words, it was, there were only five states ahead of us for the highest tax burden in the United States, now down to 12th. It was one of the fourth quartile, worst growing economies. Now it ranks in top five in the nation, and it's one of the fastest growing economies in the nation. We've created over 250,000 jobs and we've actually put North Carolina on the map by, C, by all references, CEO uh, measures, by, by independent organizations. It's the state that businesses want to set up and do business. We took the corporate tax from 6.9 down to 2.5. We took personal income tax rates from 7.75 down to 5.49. We got people back to work. Now, along the way, we had our challenges because everybody in Washington is for tax reform. They're for tax relief. And they'll come into your office and they'll tell you, let's get her going. And then on the side, they'll sit down and say, except for that one righteous exemption that I may need. We have to have members here who have the courage to do tax reform that helps working families, that creates jobs, and that silences the people that want to take this exception or that exemption away so that we do what's right for the generation that's about to look for jobs and the people that need a job today. They want their businesses to grow. They want their economies to thrive. They want the United States to be the strong, great economy that it can be. It's going to take courage. It's going to take discipline. And it's going to take time. But only so much time. I believe this Congress, this Senate, can over the course of a few months, if we focus on it, with the support of the President and collaboration with the House, we can get this done. We have to get it done. We promised the American people last year that if we had majorities, that we would do what we had to do, <clears throat> excuse me, to deliver on this promise. And it can be done. A lot of times people ask me what keeps me up at night. I tell them two things, coffee and the national debt. Coffee for the obvious reasons, but why the national debt? I'll tell you why, because when I have people on the Joint Chiefs of Staff and the Service Chiefs come into the Senate Armed Services Committee and say the single greatest threat, greatest threat to our national security is our debt, you should take notice. These are people who are skilled in, the, in, in warfare. There are people that know how to take the fight to the enemy, and when they think the greatest threat to this nation is our national debt, we better take that seriously. How do you resolve the national debt? you grow the economy. How do you grow the economy? You create jobs and have businesses thrive. And how do you do that? You do that through tax reform. You also take the criticism that's gonna be waged by some people on the far left when we talk about corporate tax reform. They're gonna say, how could you favor the big guy over the little guy? I don't know about you all, but I've worked for companies before in my life. When I was 19 and working at a trailer park, I was working for a corporation. Now, I was a little guy working for that corporation. And fortunately, in the 80s, we had a president who had the wisdom to know that if you reduce the tax burden on corporations, more little guys like me, that 19-year-old living in a trailer park, could get a job and a better paying job. Ultimately, have enough money to put myself through school. So when we get into this argument, don't take the bait by some people who will say, because we're focusing on corporate taxes and reducing the tax burden on businesses, that that's somehow a guy in a suit that's just trying to help out a business. What that is is a guy who has worked his way from that trailer park, now in the United States Senate, that benefited when Congress had the courage 
to reduce taxes, get the economy back on track, and that's what we better do. That's what we promised. That's what we're here to do today, and the time is now to get it done. The President's shown wisdom in the, in the blueprint and our leadership here in terms of the broad strokes about what tax reform needs to look like. Now, it's our job, each and every individual member of the U.S. Senate and the House, to deliver on the promise to produce tax reform to help the little guy and get this economy going to be the great economy that it has been in the past and that I have every reason to believe that it will be in the future. Thank you, Mr. President. And Mr. President, I note the absence of a quorum. The clerk